And Maggie is here now with sports and a huge game for the Oil Kings. They could just finish off the Winterhawks tonight. Yes, and uh, well, as they say, the last win, always the toughest. The Oil Kings are on the verge of winning a league championship. The biggest challenge for the coach right now is containing the excitement of his players. They must corral their enthusiasm in order to get the job done in game six. We know what's at stake, and it's just like when you're coming in playing their game one, you've got to focus on the game going into game six, and we know what uh, lies ahead of us. And it's going to be a pretty hectic place in Portland. It's going to be loud. They're going to be crazy. They're going to be energized, and we have to withstand the storm for the first 10 minutes and just kind of play a simple game. Meanwhile, the Portland Winter Hawks are just glad they're facing elimination at home. They're tough to beat at the Rose Garden, and this is their second straight trip to the finals. They've also had a seven-game series in these playoffs. Valuable experience they'll use to their advantage. I know they feel very comfortable right now, uh, but, uh, but again, uh, we can draw on last year's uh, playoff with Kootenai. We can draw on the Game 7 we had with Kamloops. Those types of scenarios, uh, I think, are very, very valuable for our group that's in the room there. The game starts at 7. The Oil Kings drew their largest playoff crowd ever on Thursday night. Over 11,000 fans witnessed Game 6 at Rexall, but there's only one super fan for the Oil Kings, and his name is Doug. Adam Cook reports. He's a fixture behind the home team's bench for every game, and he's hard to miss, cheering loud and proud. 14-year-old Douglas Gaunt is a hardcore Oil Kings fan, always wearing a jersey and holding a specially designed poster to cheer on the boys. Me, my mom. Yeah. Oh, that is your mother. Yeah, okay, I see your mother there. And who did the facial tattoos on you? My dad. Your dad did it? You let your dad do that? Yeah. He really likes the hockey. He finds it really entertaining, and he lo he just he's loved hockey all his life. Before the game and during every intermission, there's Dougie and his sister Shauna bumping fists with the Oil Kings. Well, they all know his name is Dougie. They all know Dougie. They rub him on his head. They ask him, you know, what the final score is going to be. So I think he brings them luck. Douglas owns almost every Oil Kings jersey ever created. His bedroom at home is like a shrine, and he rarely misses a game at Rexall. I'd say maybe three in three years. Douglas missed just one game this year, but he had a very good reason. He's got a heart condition. He's got a mechanical valve in his heart, and he just got really sick that day. Douglas likes to get real close to the action, maybe too close. And that's what the helmet is for, and it served him well on this night. And out of the blue, the puck came flying across the uh, glass. Hit him in the back of the helmet, hit his sign, knocked the sign out of his hand. I think he's more happy to just be involved that he got hit than worried about getting hurt at all. Did you get hit with a puck tonight? Yep. You all right? Yeah. That's a good idea wearing that helmet. Yeah. <laughs> His two favorite things in life are the Oil Kings and chicken wings. When he was about five, our dad started taking us out at least twice a week to, um, to get him chicken wings. And ever since then, he's, that's all he thinks about. And he dreams about it every night. You dream about chicken wings? Yeah. Let me get this straight. Your two favorite things in life are chicken wings and Oil Kings. Yeah. That rhymes. And beer. And beer. <laughs> and beer. Every time we go to the restaurants, he's always saying he's 18. He'll ask for a beer. So you lie to the waitress? Yep. Did you get away with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as predicting further success for the Oil Kings, you think they're going to win the WHL championship? Yeah. You think they're going to the Memorial? Yeah. You think they're going to win the Memorial Cup? Yep. Adam Cook, CTV Sports. Now, as his dad mentioned, Douglas does have a heart condition. He got really sick this morning and had to be taken to hospital, but he's in good spirits, and doctors promised he'll be able to go home and watch tonight's game and cheer on his favorite team. Final game of the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs is underway at Madison Square Garden. Each battle since game two has been a one goal difference, and two of those games needed extra time. This one will come down to the netminders. Braden Holtby versus Henrik Lundqvist. This game got started fast. Minute in, Rangers dump it in. Carl Hagelin is the first one there. Passes back to Brad Richards for the one-timer. Rangers kick it off with a beauty on Holtby, one zip. It's been a pretty even battle so far. Rangers still up two in the second. We'll have full highlights at 11.30.
Canada facing Kazakhstan in the World Hockey Championships. These teams have never met in this tourney before. First period, Ryan Getzlaff takes his time, passes off to Dion Phaneuf, one-timer, beats Kaleshnik, one zip after one late second. Two-nothing now. Jordan Everlay gets crushed by Vladislav Kaleshnikov, but he's on the redirect to Alex Burroughs. Everlay gets an assist on that one, and he would be okay. Early third. Corey Perry stopped in close, but Evander Kane buries the rebound. Canada up 4-0 now. Less than a minute later, Everly moves to the front, and John Tavares taps it in for his fourth of the tourney, make it 5-zip. You can chalk this one up as a runaway. Devin Dubnik stopped all 15 shots for the shutout. Third round of the Players' Championship. Tiger Woods began the day six shots off the lead for birdie on seven, and he sends it flying past in his par save. Ouch, Bogey drops him to one under. Canadian Graham Dillette struggled all day. He fired a four over 76, sitting at four over for the tourney. Kevin Na had been put on the clock earlier in the round for taking too much time to take a shot. Once again, he struggles to pull the trigger. Despite all the issues, he's been able to work his putter, drops the birdie on 18, taking the outright lead at 12 under. Matt Kuchar is one back. For the second time in three seasons, the Rush are one win away from playing for their first National Lacrosse League championship. They meet the Swarm in Minnesota tonight in the Western Final. These teams went to overtime twice during the regular season. We'll have full highlights at 11.30. And Canadian divers Megan Benefato and Rosaline Fillion won silver in the women's 10-meter platform synchro final at the U.S. Grand Prix in Florida. Go. In cycling news, rider Hedgedahl of Victoria, B.C. sits first overall after seven stages of the Giro d'Italia. The 31-year-old became the first Canadian to ever wear the pink jersey, which is awarded to the current overall leader. He was recently named to a list of riders who are in the hunt for Canada's two cycling berths for London 2012. Road to London brought to you by McDonald's, official restaurant of the London 2012 Olympic Games. And we are just so close now to the Olympics. It's July 27th. It's just I right around the corner. Here, yeah. <laughs> it's coming. All right. Thanks, Mike. We'll be right back. I don't know why I looked up.